This conference will now be recorded. Roll call, please. Commissioner Eastman. Commissioner Eastman is here. Commissioner Ganger. Here. Commissioner Rogers. Here. Commissioner Warren. Here. Mayor Welsh. Here. We have any additions or deletions to the agenda? We and have. I, go, go ahead. ahead. You go ahead. I'm going to make a motion that we amend the agenda by deleting item two under the consent agenda, adding a resolution counseling the May 9th budget retreat as item two under the new business, and also adding Becky Reed under comments from the audience, which will be moved up to section six between the city manager updates and other business. I'll second that. Roll call. Commissioner Eastman? Yes. Commissioner Ganger? Yes. Commissioner Rogers? Yes. Commissioner Warren? Yes. Mayor Welsh? Yes. Did you have any other additions or deletions? Do I have an, a motion for the approval of the agenda? Commissioner Eastman approve the agenda. With Commissioner the Rogers, second. All right, we have a motion and a second. Leslie, roll call. Commissioner Eastman? Yes. Commissioner Ganger? Yes. Commissioner Rogers? Yes. Commissioner Warren? Yes. Mayor Welsh? Yes. All right, I'm going to make a statement regarding our proclamations this evening due to time constraints and in the interest of everyone that has asked for a proclamation. In the interest of everyone's time during this virtual meeting, I will not read the full text of these proclamations but I do want to say a few words about them. In light of the ongoing coronavirus pandemic, I think it is important to note that the activities and people highlighted in these proclamations are all directly related to and involved in the crisis our nation is facing. More than ever, I think our trans tradition of a national day of prayer is important as this event has forced us to realize that we are not in control but god is i encourage everyone to set aside some time on thursday may 7th to pray for healing for those afflicted by this terrible disease and solace for those who have lost jobs speaking of jobs this week we are also recognizing our public servants including all of our hardworking city employees who have continued to report for duty throughout the last six weeks. Also deserving of recognition are county, state, and federal employees who work on our behalf. Among these, I most want to highlight our local nurses who represent the front line of this pandemic response will begin celebrating natural nurses week starts tomorrow the employees of south central kansas medical center who are working best and treat all of the afflicted who come through their doors and will be celebrated next week on national hospital week our dedicated police officers who continue to interact with the public and keep our community safe even as others have sheltered in place 
which is worth keeping in mind as we celebrate National Police Week next, next week, and especially in light of the tragic news of the law enforcement officer killed in the line of duty in Overland Park. We must hold solemn Peace Officers Memorial Day on Friday, May the 15th. And finally, last but certainly not the least, our firefighters, our emergency medical technicians, and our paramedics who have first contact with the afflicted and often can be the difference between life and death, even as they continue to respond to regular calls. Let us not forget their dedication on National EMS Week, which is observed on May 17th through the 23rd. Thank you all of you so much for what you do for the citizens of our Kansas City. Thank you, Mayor. You're welcome. Well put, Mayor. Good job. Thank you. Excuse me, Do you me, need Ryan. a motion to approve? Uh, I'm sorry. No. no, sir. Those were just proclamations. We've already, that was part of the consent agenda. Um, you need approval to uh, approve the uh, consent agenda? No, we had that. Motion. Yes. No, I believe Are, we still need that. Mayor. Do we still need that? Go ahead. Yeah. Mm -hmm. she, I still she move said, that we approve the consent agenda. I'm sorry. What? Go ahead. You waiting for me, Eastman? Leslie, you want me to make a motion on this? Yes, please. Yes. I so move that we approve the consent agenda with the changes and with Mayor Welch's uh, statement on the uh, proclamations. I'll second that. Thank you, Jay. Leslie, roll call, please. Commissioner Eastman? Yes. Commissioner Ganger? Yes. Commissioner Rogers? Yes. Commissioner Warren? Yes. Commissioner Welch? Yes. I have no old business showing. Is that correct? That's correct. We'll move to new mm -hmm. business, Leslie. Go ahead, number one. Consider a resolution authorizing the city to accept the bid submitted by Waller Construction of Ponca City, Oklahoma for the C Street Canal Repair Project for an amount not to exceed $19,070. Is there a discussion, please? Uh, Mayor Commission, this is Nick Hernandez. Um, this item is uh, one that we have been working on with the Traffic Safety Committee. It was a need that was identified earlier on due to the fact that the uh, bridge on the C Street Canal at the middle school um, was not in compliance. And what that done is actually pushed a lot of our traffic onto that C Street uh, bridge. Um, there are pictures in your packet in regards to it, but basically this $19,000 would um, fix the sidewalks, uh, Fix the retain wall here. That's actually the uh, west, or yeah, the west side of the road. And as you can see, the surface of it is just completely gone. Um, next picture. This is the east side, and you can see it's uneven surfaces. It'll actually uh, redo completely that deck, that concrete deck, along with the drive, and uh, replace the curb in that area and uh, we'll fix it up. And Waller uh, does a lot of our curbing work. We did get bids from Wells Construction and Waller, but this is the one that uh, uh, we would like to move forward with for the $19,070. Any questions? I make a motion that we uh, accept the uh, bid uh, by Walker Construction of Polk Seal Coma for the C Street Canal Repair Project for an amount not to exceed $19,070. Second. Roll call, Leslie, thank you. Commissioner Eastman? Yes. Commissioner Ganger? 
Yes. Commissioner Rogers? Yes. Commissioner Warren? Yes. Mayor Welsh? Yes. Resolution has passed. Number two. Consider a resolution canceling a public meeting of the governing body at 8 a.m. Saturday, May 9th, 2020 at Warren Cabin, located at 2776 272nd Road, our Kansas City, Kansas. This resolution will move, uh, will cancel the May 9th previously scheduled budget hearing. And I so move. Second. Thank you, Leslie. Okay, roll call. Commissioner yes. Eastman? Yes. Commissioner Ganger? Yes. Commissioner Rogers? Yes. Commissioner Warren? Yes. Mayor Welsh? Yes. Oh my, city manager updates. Would you like Becky Reed to go first, Commissioner? I've got, I have her to go second, but you can, if it will be, is Becky on? Yes, I am. Go ahead, Becky. All right, good evening, and thank you for um, adding me to the agenda this evening. Uh, so my uh, real job is uh, the Family and Consumer Sciences Extension Agent here in Cali County for K-State Research and Extension. But I, along with Andrew, are members of Rise Cali, which is our community health coalition. And just wanted to um, bring to your attention um, this evening that Rise Cali um, has received a Pathways to a Healthy Kansas grant, we, um, and it is nearing its completion. So that um, started in 2017, and then it ends in July of 2020. And um, again, the goal of this whole Pathways grant is to combine evidence uh, community-wide evidence-based solutions for active living, healthy eating, and tobacco prevention, which totally makes sense because Blue Cross Blue Shield, as our insurer, may, might be yours as well. Um, if they can help reduce chronic illnesses, those are behaviors that is good for um, changing as well. Um, so Pathways is um, a, an effort to do a multifaceted approach. And so there's seven different subcommittees um, in our community in Rice Cali that is working on that. So community policy, community well-being, food retail, healthcare, restaurant schools, and work sites. And um, to date, so this is some good numbers if you want to highlight, and I can share my printed report later with you, with Andrew, so he can share that with you all. But um, so Steamy Joe, Pamela South Central Medical Center, and Arc City Middle School have received funds already. And then applications are pending, meaning Blue Cross just needs to approve those for San Miguel Bakery, Arc City Rec Commission, and Cali County Head Start. And then we have some that haven't quite been submitted, but will be by June 1st. Um, and that includes for Tiger Deli, Arc City Police Department, and um, Andrew and I are working on some final details for Poplar Trail, some lighting for that as well. Um, and so total of these awards right now exceed $60,000. So pretty exciting with that. Um, with, let me back up, with the Blue Cross Blue Shield Pathways Grant, we were awarded 100,000, we meaning Rise Cali, um, 100,000 for coordination fees, and then communities in Cali County are eligible to partner with us for up to $400,000 of non-competitive funds. So that means that 400,000 is earmarked for um, Cali County um, resources. Andrew is sharing on the screen right now um, the Pathways website, and I'm pretty sure those are some local, that's the local street because that was probably from um, Arkalala. So I'm like, hey, that's a pretty like good shout out to Arc City for um, getting, I mean, it doesn't say Arc City, but we know what it is as well. So tonight, why I am on your agenda is we have basically $25,000 set aside um, to support Arc City efforts for community policy. Um, and so that could be anything related to active living, healthy eating, and or tobacco prevention. Um, and so what that might mean is, um, again, that community policy is one of those pathways and Blue Cross Blue Shield would like 
community, so either the city or the county, to take some sort of um, effort to get policy changes happening um, to help their communities. And so kind of what could $25,000 do for you in our city? Well, maybe that is um, other Kansas communities have adopted master plans, comprehensive plans, bike pedestrian plans to support active living community policies. And that 25,000 might pay for a consultant to help a community develop a master transportation plan. I mean, just a variety of, of different things. Um, and with those master plans, and Andrew's probably shared this with you previously, like that matters because if KDOT is doing grants, they like seeing those comprehensive plans. It's also a base for applying for other grants, leveraging resources, appealing to other funders. Also strategic visioning supports long-term goals and good road use uh, or resource use as well. Um, and even, I know it's we're in weird times right now and not that a whole plan would need to be developed, but it could be things that are um, developed sooner rather than later and then implement it over the next 20 years as well and here's a great little like takeaway that i had i attended a rise cali workshop last fall and i was in eastern kansas near um, iola where they have a lot of rails to trails and one of the participants there was like oh my goodness we are so jealous of you guys because you have the Arkansas City or Ark City, no, I'm sorry, Ark City, Arkansas River Trail just in your backyard in your community. We have people that will be traveling from our county to do access, you know, physical activity there because we don't have that. And you know, sometimes we sit in meetings thinking, gosh, it'd be nice to have more, you know, rails to trails, but that's not what we're blessed with. And so I think it's, you know, capitalizing on what strengths and things that you have. So my request for consideration for and no action is needed but just kind of information for you um, this evening um, if so June 1st is when the pathways all final applications have to be in for this first amount uh, or this phase one grant um, and so we are in the midst of getting ready to spend that last remaining dollars of that 400,000 that is allocated. And again, I mentioned earlier that 25,000 has been set aside for Arc City, but to get that those dollars, we it requires action on the part of you as city commission. Um, and so it has to be documented to proceed with an application for funds, such as adopting a resolution. And really a, probably a hard deadline is May 20th. Um, and of course, if you're not interested or not able to take action, we would just need to release the funding for other projects as well. So the possibility, and, um, and I'll open it up for questions here, would you guys, and there could be other options as well, but one would be, would you consider adopting a resolution to hire a consultant using Blue Cross Blue Shield funds to design a master plan? And just wording that would need to be included would be, we will use 25,000 from Blue Cross Blue Shield to hire the consultant by December 15th, 2020. Just giving you a date to kind of have action. Um, and then if there was need for additional partners or funding, that could be a, identified if like a consultant fee was in excess of that. Um, so you don't have to have all work completed, just a plan. So I just covered a whole bunch of stuff in a short amount of time. But really what the ask is, boils down to is, would you as a city commission be supportive of proceeding with an application of getting this $25,000 for your city that would then be applied for a master plan of your, obviously your own choosing timeline as well. So that's what the ask is. And again, if it's not something then we just need to know that so we can release the funds for other projects. So uh, can I, Commissioner Warren's on board with that. Awesome. Other comments? Well, this goes, I know we talked about, are we looking more like hike and bike trails? Is this kind of what we, I mean, that's something the consultant would lay out as to a possible direction, correct? This is Commissioner Rogers, by the way, sorry. Yes, hi. 
Um, yes, and Andrew, feel free to jump in. But yes, so a master plan could include all those things of your hike and bike trails. Um, and what's great is um, because we're part of this Blue Cross Blue Shield initiative, then we have access to what's called the Public Health Law Center. And they are like more than willing to help like write a resolution, um, things along that line uh, line as well. And they forwarded like a, um, the transportation system can support healthy a healthy community by increasing physical activity through walking and biking, op, transportation options to residents living in rural and frontier communities. So any policy work that you would do. And so the master plan is just like, what would this look like if we got it right type of thing? And what are considerations we need to be thinking of? I think, I think that's a great idea to have a plan laid out that someone's gonna support it or fund it basically i think that's a great way and then it's up to us as a community or as a commission to do, to uh i guess figure out what we get done when we get it done and that as time goes on but i think having a plan in place would be really neat so I, this is Andrew I, uh, Walton. it's a yes Sorry. from me i just wanted to add i I would hope if we get into this that we could kind of take a holistic look at things. So one of the things we think we need desperate attention on is sidewalks. Um, so not just building new trails, but really looking at how we can effectively repair what's already there. But I've talked to Mike Crandall about this, and I think we need to be real flexible um, when we get more detail on what's coming out of the Eisenhower program as far as, you know, we know there's going to be cost share. We know there's potentially going to be some uh, splitting up a safe route to the schools and not having that in the transportation alternative stream. So I, the timing is a good time, I think, to design something and look toward what that 10-year plan is going to be. And it also would fit really nicely into the development of our next phase of our comprehensive plan. So that's something, you know, there would be a lot of community input. We would do meetings and surveys and those sorts of things. It's not something that it's done overnight, but I think staff hopes it would kind of be a way to bridge into uh, looking and then you know the other aspect we've talked about is if there's ever federal infrastructure money that comes out of this COVID response, um, it just would be helpful to have more concrete on paper things that we already have kind of in our mind. Uh, but that's kind of what we're looking at, and you know we've sort of reached out to some different firms and at least kind of given up some ideas and what we're looking for. But if we were to do a resolution of some kind, uh, we'd do a formal RFP, of course. Because uh, that's part of the process of Blue Cross. Commissioner Rogers here again, and I agree. I think getting the community's input on this is uh, would be very important, and I think it's something that you can probably get a lot of people it's somewhat excited about, I guess, if you want to call it. But I think getting community input and getting different ideas, and it would be neat too. This is Commissioner Eastman. Uh, Andrew, uh, don't we have? Uh, ideas already presented for the commission to look at that we can put in that uh, resolution or that what we need to send to uh, Blue Cross. Don't we have something already? Or is it just kind of ideas? Well, I mean, we've got the CIP, so we have identified future street and trail projects um, and sort of have them scheduled out. Um, you know, we've got kind of a proposed trail expansion map, but the kind of plan we're talking about would hopefully be, so if you've ever seen a safe routes to schools plan that some communities have done, they're very detailed. Uh, they're usually upwards of 50 pages and they look really in things like, you know, the, the neighborhood densities around your schools and the transit patterns. We don't have anything like that on paper right now. Um, so if we can get a consultant to do that for us, it would be helpful. It's not something we need necessarily. We've obviously gotten a TA grant of a fairly large already without that, but um, it would be helpful to have it and be able to just drop that into our applications. And I think that's what the school district's interest is in this as well. I've I've talked to Dr. Ballard. They haven't, you know, acted formally, but he indicated they would be willing to partner with us. Of course, they're already participating in the Traffic Safety Committee, and he indicated he thinks that potentially the school board might even make a financial commitment if it came to that, although that that was before all this pandemic stuff hit. So that, you know, we're all kind of tightening our belts now. And that's one reason I asked Becky, would it be possible to just fully fund this out of what's remaining in our coordination funds? And as far as we can tell thus far, that that's a possibility. It's not a requirement that we have to have like a matching fund. Where it really falls on city is we'd have to administer 
the next year's process. So um, that's kind of why we're asking for the commitment level because it it would tie up my time and maybe some other staff's time as we progress um, actually working with this consultant and getting that community input. Okay, we don't we do we need to um, I I was listening to Becky and I think I heard that we just need to send a proposal in. Is that correct? Well, so in the proposal, it will need to include some sort of um, city commission action, including that you have, have adopted a resolution uh, to do whatever okay. you're gonna, is. And so you don't have to get into the weeds of we're going to do X, Y, and Z projects. I think it's pulling back and saying, we would like to use these funds to develop a, for instance, master transportation plan, or um, is it a complete street? You, whatever the wording needs to be. I mean, don't get lost in those details, but it needs just to be that okay. you guys do some sort of resolution that you adopt as a commission. Andrew, can you, uh, Andrew, uh, Commissioner Warren, can you do that for our next meeting so we can prove it? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And we can talk about it at the next study session. I just, I asked Becky to kind of come and represent the organization, so it wasn't coming from me. But it sounds like you're all supportive of proceeding, so I'll yes. definitely drop something. Uh, one other question, Andrew, when you were talking about uh, uh, getting that information and stuff, that's going to help us on a lot of other grants when we went down the road, I mean, uh, uh, or could have. Oh, absolutely. I mean, it's... Because it, we haven't got that information to know what you're talking about, you know. Uh, uh, and uh, if we, you know, if we get where we get hire somebody that gives that information, then we could probably use it for other different other other grants, other entities for a future use, right? Oh, I would believe so. You know, we were going to do the surveying portion anyway. I mean, as part of the comp plan, but this hopefully we'd find a firm with some engineering expertise that can kind of meld that together with. You know, we've already seen the trans system study, but we've talked about other areas like First Street that this might be a way to get a little higher focus on those and look at some solutions that we haven't thought of yet. Sure. That's good. Yeah. Sounds good. I'd, I'd like to have that on the agenda for the next meeting. So my next question is then, um, I just want to make sure we can get everything that you guys need so we can keep to the timeline of um, having things done. So is your next meeting May 19th? Yes. Okay. Yes. Um, and is that something that you would actually want maybe some bids from um, potential consultants or do you want just to maybe do a blanket type of we want to approve the 20 or apply for the 25,000 to be used on that? I, and I can would, double check with Blue Cross of how they want to handle that too. So I would like uh, the resolution to apply for the 25,000. Awesome. I agree. Any further action? Thank you, Becky. Um, thank you all very much. Have a great evening. I'm going to go ahead and excuse myself. I have another board meeting for my real job also at this time. So thank you all and have a great evening. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, this is Nick Hernandez. We have a couple items coming up on the next commission meeting. Uh, we are going to have our franchise agreement with Kansas Gas. Uh, they were able to put five year extensions on there. So we'll have that at the next meeting. Um, also, uh, let's see what else. The pool, swimming pool, we've had conversations, Deb Davidson and I have, in regards to the swimming pool. and as of right now, it looks like June 1, we will open the swimming pool. Uh, there will be a 90 person cap um, at the swimming pool, um, but uh, it will be open as of right now, unless something drastic changes or the governor puts new orders down or extends phase one. Uh, so we're planning for it. Um, and if it's delayed, so be it. Um, IYQ is going to be a little bit trickier. We're still trying to figure out if we even can do IYQ, and if so, at what point, and what are going to be the safety requirements and guidelines for it. 
uh, she has some pretty good ideas, but we haven't finalized anything. And uh, everything, all of our plans will have to go through uh, Tom Langer with the health department just to get his his blessing and make sure that we're following his guidelines and, and some of his suggestions to make sure he's comfortable with our plan. Um, outside of that, uh, I, you know, besides the updates that are actually in your packet uh, that are pulled up on the screen, I don't have anything else. Uh, Nick, I had a couple updates on those. Okay. Um, obviously, the budget retreat has been canceled on number two. Number three, if you guys would like, I can send out that Zoom link next week because we will probably discuss with the, the leadership structure of Rice Cali what we just talked about tonight. So if you care to listen into that, you're certainly welcome to. Um, and then number six, the... Uh, check lane has been delayed. That will not occur this month. They've pushed that back probably till June or July. Um, I just got that update today, actually. And number seven, uh, that's also been canceled. The Service Alliance meeting won't be until probably sometime later this summer. Um, so I just want to let you know those aren't happening now after all. Okay. Chief Ward? Good evening, Mayor, Commissioners. I appreciate you giving me the opportunity to come before you and talk to you about the uh, the annual report. As you know, we've been doing an annual report so that you can uh, see what we've been doing uh, with all your tax dollars and see how, how much we've progressed on our plan. Uh, this is the fourth year that we've produced the annual report, and uh, we have dubbed 2019 the year of change. Uh, as you can see through the report, uh, hopefully you all had a chance to, to look at it. We do have it available uh, also on the website, and there are copies uh, in the station uh, for the general public. And, of course, we also uh, will put that on our uh, Facebook account, too, so people can have access to it. Uh, 2019, we uh, had a lot of change. We had uh, the retirement of uh, a captain, Captain McCaslin, and Lieutenant uh, Arnett. That uh, gave us an opportunity to do a little bit of a change in our structure. And as a result, uh, the chain reaction, we ended up with uh, promotions of two captains, a promotion of two lieutenants, and a promotion of three sergeants. Uh, so basically, we changed the about 50% of our command staff uh, in 2019. At that same time, we also had three openings. Uh, in the department, and we've hired three new officers. Um, so we've definitely uh, have changed the face of the department. Uh, if you look back over the last five years, we've actually had 11 officers out of the 26 uh, who are new. And uh, not only are they new, but they also uh, comp comprise a, a completely different uh, look for the department. We now have six of our 26 officers are female. And uh, Mayor, as you know, in the law enforcement world, uh, having that high a number of females in law enforcement is very unusual and something to, to be proud about. We have some really good uh, diversity and representation for our department. Uh, the plan is, or the uh, report is also divided up. In addition to documenting all the promotions and the uh, retirements, we also have section on the, uh, the department activity. And as you will see, uh, we continue to be a very active department. Um, we, when we look at the departments that are comparable to us, uh, you'll see that we answer more calls, we have more arrests, we issue more citations, we issue more warnings. Uh, we are very busy as our traditional police department. And then of course, the last part is our outreach, which our outreach programs are uh, just absolutely exceptional. They have far exceeded anything that I ever had planned when I came here. Uh, the department and the, the people really ran with the, the idea of what we wanted to do, and uh, they have embraced that. Uh, that today, our outreach program, is what sets us apart from all the other agencies, and uh, it, that's something that we, we definitely are very proud about. Um, one of the things I do want to point out that is in there is uh, we do have the lowest crash rate when you look at uh, us in Winfield and Cali County. Uh, that is even something that's 
remarkable considering the fact that we have a higher volume of traffic. So statistically, based on just traffic numbers, we actually should be higher, uh, but we are significantly lower than those other agencies. And that is a direct result of the targeted traffic safety programs that we have in place. Um, all the different things that we're doing, uh, you know, that's been recognized by AAA and, and uh, we have just submitted for the consideration again. And I, I think that we have a pretty good chance of, of being recognized once again uh, with a platinum award. So uh, we're, we're making Arc City a safer place to drive, definitely. Uh, basically to wrap it up, uh, you know, this report, uh, I, I can't tell you how proud I am of everything that the officers and the civilian staff have accomplished. Um, I think that we today have the right people in the right places and we have truly inst instituted the best practices and uh, community policing throughout the entire organization. And uh, I, I see 2020, even though it's been a little bit strange getting started, uh, I think that we're going to continue building positive relationships in the community and uh, I'm very optimistic moving forward. At this point, uh, if anybody has any questions or uh, any comments, I'd be happy to try to field any of those. When can we get in the front door? <laughs> <laughs> um, our, our plan is that we're going to pretty much follow uh, the governor's plan. Uh, so our phase one is uh, locked down and uh, phase two, when we go to that, which I assume is going to be about the 18th, uh, we'll have some people coming in uh, that are, you know, making reports and so for interviews and things like that, but it'll be only as needed. Uh, we don't open our doors uh, to the general public for uh, tours and visitors until we get to phase three. Just checking, Chief. Yeah. I'll quit. I'll quit rattling the door. Well, we just, you know, I just want to make sure that we're doing everything we can and uh, making sure that we have enough people to to handle emergency calls. Uh, you know, we're only 26 officers. It'd be pretty easy to to ruin the number of people we have if we got uh, people sending home for 14 days for quarantine. So. Sure, sure. I speak for the well, entire commission, I believe, in telling you how much we acknowledge the difficulties that you have encountered countered with this pandemic and how much we appreciate everyone's service. Chief, this is Jay Warren. Have we uh, done any more on the mental health thing? You know, we talked about several months ago before this epidemic hit, you know, about having a court, a special court. Yeah, yeah. Well, that, uh, you know, things have kind of uh, slowed down a little bit uh, because of all this pandemic, you know, but uh, we, we did submit for the grant that uh, you guys did approve for submitting for. Uh, I'll find out in October if we get that. Um, okay. We are looking at our numbers. Our, our numbers are going up. If we continue at this rate, we're going to see another 40% increase in our, uh, in our CIT calls. Um, so it's definitely an area that uh, we're going to be trying to move forward on. Um, I feel pretty good about the grant. Um, the, the individual who uh, was at Fort County has uh, announced that she is leaving and going to work for a school district. And uh, so that'll set Fort County back a little bit. Uh, she was definitely a, a great resource for us and somebody that we worked really well with. So uh, we'll have to see how that progresses. But uh, I've been working with Steve Denny and, and uh, I'm hoping that he gets somebody good to replace her with, and uh, we can continue to move forward with that. Okay. Uh, Chief, this is Commissioner Eastman, and I want to thank you for your leadership in the uh, department. It is shown in the awards uh, that uh, you guys have been getting in the, the uh, decline in crime and uh, other things. Thank you. Well, thank you, sir. I, I wish I could take credit for it, but uh, credit definitely goes to the guys that are doing the work. It this does, but Commissioner Rogers, that's all right. I mean, Commissioner Rogers, I'll second what Dwayne said. Thank you, Chief Ward, for everything you've done. And please pass it on to all the, the men and women of the, the agency. You guys have done a great job, and you guys are truly dedicated to the community, and it shows through your outreach and the way you handle yourself. So please pass it on to them. Thank you. Yeah, but Chief, I'll argue with that, that, that uh, <laughs> you know, it takes somebody special like you 
to, to make these changes like you've had over the last several years to get where we're at. So uh, I understand where you're coming from. Your help's very important, but also the leader is too, and that's you. So thank you so much for what you do. Well, thank you. Thank you all for the kind words. I'll pass that along to the troops. Okay. Thanks, Chief. Thank you. If there's any other discussion. I just have one item. Um, our local businesses need our help um, more than ever right now. So I would just encourage everyone to shop local and shop as often as they possibly can. They definitely need our help right now. Thank you. That is so true. we have an action for adjournment. So move. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Meeting is adjourned.